Okay, we're up to the daf mem vav amal alav the two daps. <clears throat> so we're talking about we're still in our mishnah that we said there that a woman, a craftsman, has no chazaka because since he and the fact that he had it for a long time doesn't prove anything because he had right to have it in the first place. It was given to him for repairs. The same thing an aris, a sharecropper, and he's been sitting there and taking the entire yield for three years doesn't prove anything doesn't prove anything because um the reason why the owner was a moichet because they had you know an artist had a right to be in that field and so on that's the principle says you want to talk about me learn what about this how to like the base of woman what happens that if the person the the, the, the craftsman gave you the house <clears throat> I'm I'm getting a problem. So what happens in that instance? I'm getting a problem model with your sounds. Anybody else having a problem? Yeah. 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 Okay. But, One second. Is the sound any better now? Yes. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Okay. Everyone yeah. agrees? Yeah. Well, so far, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll call you again if it goes it goes off. Okay. You can speak. I speak. Okay. Speak freely. Okay. The says the Gemara. Turn around. Is helpful like Kaleem be Kaleem be base Uman? What happens? If uh, Shimon went to this uh, this this um, this woman place, this tradesman, to pick up his garment, and he was he was given someone else's garment. So the question is, can he use the garment that he was given, even though it's not his, until they find his garment wherever it ended up? The din is hareze yishtamish ben. He may use it ad shiyavai hala until that other person who ended up with his garment. And will return it the yitl eshalay and take back his own garment. You're allowed to use it. Now the the din is if you borrow somebody else's item without permission, you're a goddess. So okay, Shimon, you know his. We don't know where Shimon's garment is, but what right does he have to use Reuben's garment? Shimon knows it's not his own garment. Why do we say that he could use it? We'll see in a minute why. But then it says, if you're the base, well, let's say you're in the house of a mourner, the base hamishta, you're in some party, everyone hung up their coats on the coat rack, and it seems that someone else took your coat by mistake, and the only coat that's left is not yours. You have no right to use it. You have no right to use it in the interim period. Now, the question, obviously, what's the difference between these two cases? Why should there be a difference between these two cases? If you're not allowed to use it in the party play, you understand why. It's not your coat. Why could you use it? You're a shoyol shalei medas. You're borrowing without permission. So why is it that if you got, if you received a coat from the from the trades from the craftsperson or the tradesman, and you're allowed to keep it, you're allowed to use it till the, you recover your own? What's the difference? Amar Av. So Av says, "Habi Yasiv." I was once sitting kamei de chabibi. I was once sitting before my uncle, my beloved Rabchia, va'amali, and he told me, "V'chiyein adam asu loymer leumen." We're a mem vav amad aleph, and we just learned um, the difference. We're learning a case here where you you receive your coat back from the cleaners, for example, but it was somebody else's coat, and somebody else ends up with yours. You're allowed to use it until you recover your own coat. But if you go to a um, to a party or somewhere and your coat got lost and you're left with someone else's coat, you cannot use it. What's the difference? So Rab said, I heard from my uncle who said the following: When it comes to a repairer. It's quite common, at least in those days, that the person who gave his item to the to the repair to repair it was said to the repair, you know, once you repair it, you can sell it if you want. Try to get a try to see if you can sell it. Now that it's almost brand new, it's renovated. You can see if you can sell it. So, so therefore, sorry, um, she said yes. You think it's uncommon for a person to say to a tradesman, Mechoyli Talisi, sell my talus for me. So what happened was, this is probably what happened with Sir Maizik. The repairer took the coat that he was told that he can sell, but by mistake, instead of taking that person's coat, he ended taking up, up taking Shimon's coat and sold it or gave it to somebody you know, and sold it onto someone. <clears throat> then he realized his mistake. So he has to go and retrieve it. But in the interim, Shimon came to pick up a coat. So the, um, the repairer took the coat that he was given to sell with permission. And he gave that to Shimon and said, in the interim period, you hold on to this coat till I find 
your coat and I give it back to you, then I'll sell this coat. So therefore, it wasn't a shoyal shleim adas. The uman knew, was conscious of exactly what he was doing, and he and he deliberately gave this guy this coat to this to Shimon, knowing that he was he was given permission to sell it, and therefore this is part of the in uh, the sell because he has to find where the coat is and then pass this coat on and give that person the right coat. That's the difference. But in the case of a party, you have since nobody gave anything, the whole thing is a mistake. And if it's a mistake, you cannot use someone else's coat. <clears throat> you're not. You're not going to do that. Okay. Says the Gemara. The Amar Rav Chiyah Rav Nachman Rav Chiyah. This Rav Nachman limits. It's a loishon. When do we say this? When do we say it's a calculator, it's deliberate giving to you, and therefore you have a right to use it? Elohu. Only if the woman himself gave it to you. I will each tell you about it, but if his wife gave it to you or if his children, then definitely it's just an error, it's a mistake. And a shoyal shalai medas, you're not allowed to use someone else's item, not permission. Even he, when do we say that? When he gave you, when he handed you the coat, he said, Here, here is a coat. He said, Here's a coat. I will tell you, he said, Here, take back your coat. That means the woman is actually making a mistake. If the woman said, take back your coat, I mean, the woman believed that this coat actually belonged to Shimon, but it was, it didn't. And therefore, Shimon has no right to use it because he's, so Shoyal Shlomedas, the owner, you know, the owner, whoever the owner is, has no idea and you have no permission, you're a guy. I love Tala Zideyu. This is not his coat, so he has no right to use it. Omale Abai Lerav. Abai and Rav was having an interesting discussion. And Abai said to Rav, well, let me show you what kind of cheats. The people in in in, in the Pumpadisa are. Talk, come. Achvilach, I will show you Ramoy the Pumpadisa. Excuse me. I will show you the, the con artists that live in Pumpadisa and how they behave. Let me tell you what happened. My Avdi, what they do. This is what their behavior is. Omali, a guy would go over to them to this um <clears throat> to this person and say, Hey, I am um, Lee Sarbaloy, give me back my coat. Um, and, the, and the other guy, he bought, he gave someone a coat to fix whatever it is, and he said, "Give it back to me." The other guy says, "Don't know who you are. Never received the coat from you." So the owner of the coat says, "What do you mean?" Easily, Saadi, I have witnesses. The Chazi Gabach, they saw a, a, a coat by you, and it looks very similar to mine. We're not talking about they actually saw the coat. They know for a fact. There's nothing to talk about. Just go to the interior and get it back. They, they, it, it appears to be my coat. I'm Malay, so the so the guy said, Uman said, it's not your coat. It was it's it looks like your coat, but it wasn't yours. So the owner of the coat says, why don't you just bring the coat out? The next zenna will can see. And if it's not my coat, fine, then we'll settle the matter right then and there. I'm not going to accuse you of taking my coat if it if it wasn't my coat. I'm Malay. So the the the, the, the Uman says, Ibra, you know what? I am not going to bring the coat out to you. It's somebody else's coat, and I have no right. Suddenly, he becomes very firm. I have no right to show you someone else's properties. You know, we have privacy laws and everything else. I am not going to show it to you. <clears throat> so Abayi said, you see, that's how they 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 somehow worm their way out of, of trouble. On my rubber, rubber said to him, look, in principle, I agree with you. The people in, in Pumbadis are not to be trusted. But this conversation... Even if, if it would be with between trustworthy people, the woman is within his rights not to present the coat, and and you cannot prove that he has your coat, and therefore you're you're um, you know you can't go any further with it. But in this case, I agree with you that they're cheaters. But this story, even if it happened with regular people, would be the same thing. What's going on? <clears throat> so um, says the Gemara. Oh my brother, Shaper Kamale. Rubber says that that what they said is a hundred percent right. That what this woman said is right. <clears throat> Why? Because raw Tanya, when we learned before that the woman is not believed, is only if the witnesses actually saw the talus by the woman. However, <clears throat> And remember, we learned before, Rabbi Abai, there were witnesses who saw it by the woman. But over here, uh, uh, over here, there were no witnesses who saw it by the woman. And um, right. can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. 
Uh, witnesses actually uh, have to see the coat by the woman before we say, oh, give me back my coat. But since the witnesses here didn't actually see, they saw something that looks similar, but it's not it's not real testimony. They can't give some money or anything else. <clears throat> and therefore, the woman does not have to in any way present the coat. Amr Rashi Rashi. So it's interesting to continue the conversation that if you're a cheater, what someone should do. Amr Rashi Rashi said, if the owner of the coat would be clever, what he wants is that the coat should be presented so that the witnesses that stand next to him can look at it and say, yes, I recognize the coat or not. So, so Rav Ashi says, if you'd be smart, try to convince the this woman to bring the coat out. How would you do that? The Amalek, you can be just as conniving as him. The Amalek, you tell him, but very quietly, so the witnesses don't hear. You say to him, look, I, I, I think I owe you money. And probably that's why you're holding on to the coat, because you think that this is a form of payment. So why don't you bring the coat out, and let's assess the value of the coat. Let's say I owe you $100. Maybe the coat is worth 150 So I will then take the coat back, and, and, uh, and, and you only have to pay me $50 for it. <clears throat> this way you can entice the person to bring the coat back, you know, the coat out. And once the coat is out, the witness rather say, hey, we recognize this coat that belongs to this person. And then and, and they'll just take the coat back. And the hundred dollars that he said, because he whispered it in his ear, nobody heard it. He'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. I was just, I invented a story. So that's how you, that's a ruse that you can use to get him to bring the coat out so that the witness can see it. Saravashi, the hakim, if you're intelligent, if you're mishavel, if you're street smart, mashulere, turn him into a day, turn it into a situation where you can see it. Why are you holding on to the coat? Because I owe you money. And he says it quietly so the witness don't hear it. Well, hash to now, I think, why don't you take the coat out? The shaminu, and let's assess the value of the coat. And shkoil ad didach, that's going to be. So therefore, the coat probably is worth more than what I owe you. So then we'll work out, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pay you, you know, we'll take off the coat, whatever I owe you, and the rest you get back to me. So that's if you want to, uh, if you're street smart and you want to get into play, you know, you want to get to play along. The son of Avi says to Rashi, well, if that guy is street smart, he can respond. I don't need to take the coat out in order for you to assess. I already had it assessed before, and the coat is worth less than what you owe me. Where's the balance of the money you owe me? Anyway, interesting discussion to Gemara, how people who are trying to uh, con each other, or at least an innocent person trying to outsmart a con artist, and that's very, very difficult. <clears throat> You're always a step ahead. Says the Gemara further... Um, Two dots. Oris ain't the chazoka. The Gemara says that Oris has no chazoka. Why? Again, because he he has a right to be there. And the fact that for three years he took the entire yield doesn't really prove much. Says the Gemara, am I? Why doesn't it prove much? Why he's not a chazoka? Ah, do he a palga? Generally, an Oris is split a third, a quarter, a half. You know, you take part of the crop, I take part of the crop. And now, Bahashtakula, I'm saying I had three years chazoka, three years, and I say I bought it from you, and I had a chazoka for three years. <clears throat> and that's not, that's very uncommon. If because that's uncommon, that should be a valid chazaka. Omar Abiyech said, Ba'arise bote of us. We're talking about where the Rashbam and some of the learn, we're talking about that this sharecropper, it, it has been the sharecropper for this family, not just himself, but his parents, his father, his grandfather, his children, they're all involved in the business. And because they've all been sharecroppers for so long, the Rashbam adds, which is interesting, and you have that I need some clarification, even though the Rishayim don't give any clarification. That is, he says, because it's a family business, you've been doing it for so long, they have no right to fire you. Interesting. Why don't they have the right to fire you? Just because your father worked there and your Zayda worked there, and why don't they have the right to fire you? But that's what Rosh Mam says. They have no right to fire you. And therefore... It's since he's he's there, he's part of the furniture, they could have an arrangement where three years he keeps the crop and three years you keep the crop, and that's why there's no chazak. The Rambam learns that, that um, sorry, we missed one line. The Rambam learns Arise Batiavas means that not the Oris's father was there, but the farmer or the owner of the land 
you worked for his father, you worked for his aide, and now you work for him. And because you worked for all these generations, therefore they cannot fire you. And uh, and it's common to have this kind of arrangement. You're not just an employee that comes and goes. You are, you, you know, you're part of the, the family. <clears throat> and yes, other Amun. Says the Gemara, Amram Nachman. Later on, we're going to learn the Gemara in the next daft that we're going to do soon. Says there that the son of an Aris does have a Chazaka. And they all ask the way the Rajbam learns that it's a family, the father, the Zayda, and the son all working for this guy. And it says it clearly there's no Chazaka. How can you reconcile the two Gemaras? And that's why the Rambam and other Rishayim learn we're talking about, not about the Aris himself, we're talking about the family. When we say, but the others, we're talking about the owner of the land. That you work not only for this for this fellow now who's the owner, but for his father and his grandfather, and therefore you are permanently there, and they can't fire you. That's what they say. But to, to defend the Rashbam, some of the Rishayim say is that the Gemara later on when it says that the son of an Aris does have a Chazaka, it's talking about where the son of the Aris is not an Aris, is not working on that farm. He's an accountant, and therefore he would have a Chazaka. But not, but we're talking here about where the son of the Aris and the Aris and his father, all of them worked on this particular field. And that's why they have no Chazaki because they're, they're really, uh, it's it's the, the, the Chazaki is that they all work there, the father and grand pass it down from generation to generation, and therefore they cannot be fired. And it's quite possible that that's the kind of arrangement they have. You work three years and all the crop is yours, and next three years the crop belongs to the, the owner of the field. So therefore you have no Chazaki. If you bought it, you should retain the style. Amram Nakhon says, what about Adi Shahidi, Adi Sintakta, but the artist invited other workers to come in, but he, and he took off, he went on holidays, then Yesh Lechazaka, then we can surmise that he actually bought it, because there's no way that the owner of the field who trusts this artist will suddenly have all these strangers there, and the artist not even on the, on the ground. Who's he trusting? Then it must be that he sold it to the artist, and the, owner, the artist now is the new owner, Yesh Lechazaka. Then you would have a chazaka. My time of wide of it in it's not common. The nochti arisi la'ara that he would that he would invite all these other sharecroppers in the land. Vishasik and the owner will be quiet. Say, where's my sharecropper? You're supposed to work for me. Where are you? And you have all these strangers. I don't know who they are. Amar Abiyechin says, Aris shecholak la'arisi. If, if, however, Abiyechin says, if this Aris invited other sharecroppers and he's working with them. Then maybe he's getting older, or maybe the, the field, you know, the crop this year has such a great yield, you needed more workers. And if he's working with them, then Ainle Chazaka, the owner would say, I didn't protest because you were there. And I trust you that you will make managing all these workers well. <clears throat> and therefore, I didn't protest. My time, Amor will say, Harmania Ba'alma Shavir. He gave him permission, Harmania's permission, that he just gave me permission to hire more workers. So Therefore, you had a right to be there. And the fact that the owner didn't protest why you're taking the entire crop, that's the arrangement that you have. If you bought it, you should have retained um, the star. Sholach le Rab Nachman bar Abchizda. had a son called Rab Nachman. <clears throat> Sent a message to Rab Nachman bar Yaakov. So traces from him in, in a few places, but this is the Gemara that he brings a proof. Whenever it says the Gemara Rab Nachman, which Rab Nachman is it? Rashi says in a few places it's Rab Nachman by Yitzchak. Tracer says it's Rab Nachman by Yaakov because Tracer says we never find Rab Nachman by Yaakov. The only time we find the name Rab Nachman with the father's name Yaakov is if there's another Rab Nachman in that discussion. So then to differentiate between the two Rab Nachmans, we tell you who the father is. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, it's just Stam Rab Nachman. So it's Rab Nachman by Yaakov versus Rashi and Rab Yitzchak. He asked the following question. Yelamdenu Rabbeinu, please teach me. Oris meid or enu meid. If somebody accuses the owner of the of the field that uh, this field is stolen, can the Oris, the sharecropper who knows, has some information about this, can he testify on behalf of the owner of the land that he knows for a fact the owner of the land owns it, he saw him buy it from someone else and so on? Or is he in a gay bedover? Or is he... um? Uh, what do you call it? Why would he be in a gay bedover? Because uh, if, if he wants the land to remain with the landowner so that he can get his crop. If it turns out to be a stolen field, he gets nothing. So can we trust him or does he have a vested interest? sat there. Omali said, Shmuel actually said, Odis made that Odis can't testify. 
could. He, we don't consider it as if he has a vested interest. We'll explain in a minute why not. So the Lord of Atan, you let the Bryce say he made to the more and I ask. It says clearly the Bryce that an orders cannot testify. What's the difference? Like Kasha, the Gemara says, it depends on the situation, depends on the circumstances. How the Ika paid him out of the Oris, let's say, you know, planted in the beginning of the season, and now that, you know, everything's growing, and he still hasn't yet cultivated, he hasn't yet, uh, what do you call it, he hasn't yet harvested it, then he has a very strong vested interest to make sure that the land remains with his owner, so that he can collect and reap the dividends, and, and the yield, everything else. So then he cannot testify, he's in the Geber Dabar. And here it's talking about when he already took away the entire harvest and he didn't do anything now, then at this stage, if he lose, if if, if he can testify, because even let's say the field gets taken away, he doesn't really lose out because as a sharecropper, he'll always find work. And the new owner might need a sharecropper, or there are other fields that need a sharecropper. So he's no longer in a gay but dover. When he gave dover, when he put in money and effort and time. And he didn't yet reap the dividends of his of his efforts and work. Then he's in the gay if he's testifying. But maybe he'll have to repay to the original. He owner. doesn't pay anything. He's only a sharecropper. What do you right. mean? Because if if he's like oh, okay, the sharecropper, the sharecropper is not like a shooter. In in a certain way, yeah, in a certain way, no. He got paid. His payment from the owner is that he gets a share in the crop. But he doesn't have any any chalik in the land. So if it turns out to be stolen, the owner of the land is the one who has to reimburse, not him. Okay. Tana we learned. Arev. So you, you have two kinds of guarantors. One is called an Arev, one is called an Arev Kablin. Okay, a loan is, is, will not take effect, let's say, of a person won't trust the borrower unless he has some kind of a guarantor who will guarantee the loan. So generally the rule is when you have an Arv, first you have to go to the left, to the levy, you got to go to the borrower and try to collect whatever the amount is. If the borrower has no has no, has no no means of, of paying you back, has no funds and has no land, no property, then you go to the Arv and you collect from the Arv. An Arv Kablin is different. An Arv Kablin well, the Machlekes are showing you what makes a person an Arav Kablan, whether you actually lend the money to the Arav and the Arav passes it on to the borrower, or whether you lend it to the borrower, but the Arav Kablan says, I am a guarantor of Kablan, which means you have the right to decide if you're going to go to, to the Arav first or to the Leva first. It's up to the lender who he wants to go to first. That's called an Arav Kablan. But an Arav Stam, you will, you get, what do you call it? You go to you, you. You have to go to the borrower. The borrower can't pay. Then you go to the arv. The arv will pay for the loan. And now the borrower owes the money to the arv. The, the borrower now owes the money to the arv. The arv paid on his behalf. Big machlekes. When, if the borrower owes the arv, when did the shibut take place? When did that lien or that indebtedness take place? Is it only when the when the arv paid the money? The Arab paid the money on a Tuesday afternoon, two o'clock. So that's when the, the 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 obligation gets transferred to the borrower. That's when the shibud begins. Or is it retrospective from the time of the original loan? Since the the, the, the Arab became a, a guarantor from the beginning of the loan, two months earlier, and now that the, the borrower hasn't paid and the Arab stepped in and paid on his behalf, the shibud begins two months ago. And the big enough min Allah is... You know, what happens to properties that were sold in the interim between the two? Does the Arab have the right to go to those properties or does he only have a right to go to anything that was take, happened after the day that he paid off that loan? <clears throat> That's a separate mark like this. Start what we learned. Arav, an Arav mayid l'leva. An Arav can testify on behalf of the borrower. The borrower has a property and now somebody, some, suddenly somebody uh, alleges that this property is stolen property. The bar, the Arab has a right to testify and say, no, the property is stolen. And you first you come, you would think, what do you mean? He's mamish in the gay bedover. If the lever has the property, then the lender will go to the to the borrower to collect. But if the Arab, if the if the if the, if the borrower has no assets, the lender will go to the Arab. So of course he has a vested interest. How can you say that the Arab can testify? The Gemara says there's one writer here. 
This is talking about that the, the borrower has another property as well. So even if the borrower loses this particular property that is under discussion, even the borrower loses that particular property, there's still another property. So the lender is going to go to, to the assets of the borrower, not to the owner. So to the owner, it makes no difference you know, if the, if the borrower has one property or two properties or three properties, it makes no difference. So therefore, he can he can testify. So who needs the Arachritas? Lekeach Rishon Meyid Lekeach Shaini. That what happens, the din is if, let's say, the borrower borrowed $1,000, a lien now on his, you know, on his properties, there's an encumbrance there. The borrower then sells a property, but, but the person who bought the property, the Lekeach Rishon, the first person, you know, made sure that the borrower had other properties there that he could pay off his debts. Then um, the borrower then sold the other property he had to a second lecaire. It's called lecaire Shaney. When the, the lender then goes to the borrower and says, pay me back. And the borrower says, I have no assets. So the din is, first he has to go to the lecaire Shaney. He goes to the last person that uh, borrowed. We had more Baba Kama. He, the first person says, I left you a property and asset by the bar. What did he come to me for? So the lender can only go to the very last person who bought a property and take it from him. So the Lekeach Rishon can testify, the first buyer can testify on behalf of the second buyer. If the second buyer has a property and is alleged that um, that, that property was stolen, the first buyer can testify. But Lechayda, why? Lechayda, if, the, if, if that property turns out to be stolen and the second buyer has no assets, then the lender is going to go directly to the first buyers. So it doesn't have vested interest. So again, that the second buyer bought another asset from the borrower. So even though he might lose one of the properties, he still has another property that he can pay off the Malvas. So the first buyer makes absolutely no difference to him whether, you know, um, one way or another, because he's out of the loop, and therefore he can testify. What about a cobbler? A cobbler is one that the lender goes direct, if the lender chooses, he can go directly to the guarantor and collect, not even bother going to the borrower. So what about a cobbler? Can he testify if, uh, let's say, if the... Um, uh, what do you call it? If there's a, a, a alleged that the lawyer, the borrower, has a property and it's alleged that it's stolen, can he testify on behalf of the lawyer or not? <clears throat> so he says, Amnila, one opinion says, may it. He can testify. Uh, he, he can testify, as we said before, provided that, the, that there's other properties as well sitting by the borrower. As long as there's another property, then the, the, the Arab couple can testify because he's no worse off or better off. But the Amnila, others said, ain't a maid. Others say he cannot testify because he's in a gay bedover. So explain, what does that mean? <clears throat> Amnila, Lechayda, we said before, okay, Amnila made the one opinion says he can testify just like an Arab dummy, just like an Arab. When do we say that an Arab can testify? Only if there's more than one property by the second Lekeach. Same thing over here. When can this Arab Kabbalah testify if there's more than one property by the lawyer? So then, you know, even if he loses this one property, he has another property. So it really makes no difference. Arab Kabbalah is no better or no worse off. However, but I'm the others say, ain't they made? He cannot testify. You know why? The Nichalei de Lehevi Biyadei he would rather the Leva have two properties rather than one, even though the Malva can only collect one, but he'd rather have the Leva have two. And why is that? First of all, the Malva has more choices. So the, the R of Kabbalah has one property. The, the borrower themselves has two properties. So of course, the Malva, would, we can surmise, the Malva would go to the Leva because he can then choose the better quality, the worse quality, rather than going to the R of Kabbalah that he has no choice. Plus, if remember, we learned about three levels of properties. There's idiots, the best, Bain is the average, and Zabur is the worst. And about Khaiv is entitled to Zaburius. So therefore, if a, if um if a if the borrower has two properties, the Balchaiv is entitled to the better quality property. But if the if he goes to the Arab Kaplan and only has one property, he's only entitled to whatever that property is. So probably the Malva would end up with a life. So the 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 of carbon has a vested interest to make sure that there are more choices by the labor than not, and therefore he cannot testify. That's what the Gemara is saying. Yeah. 
says the Gemara, um, um, yeah. The because the Balchay then will go to the borrower. My the boy is he has choices. Choose this, you can choose that. 